I'll kick it off. Everyone, I'm Benji Lampel. I'm an airflow engineering advocate here at Astronomer. Um, today, we're doing a Live with Astronomer. It's our bi-weekly series of short videos uh, for data pipeline authors, and they're curated by Astronomer's resident airflow experts. Topics range all over the place from airflow feature highlights to DAG authoring how-tos and even interviews with developers of airflow. And we do this just to make sure that you all get the most out of your airflow experience. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the uh, Python task decorator. And what, we're gonna go through a demo that Kenton will lead us through. So without any further ado, um, Kenton, why don't you kick it off? Awesome, thanks, Benji. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. I'm Kenton Danis, I'm a lead developer advocate at Astronomer. Uh, as Benji said, today, we're gonna to talk about the Python task decorator. I'm gonna go through a quick demo of how to use it in your DAGs. Uh, typical for this series, we will keep this super short, um, about 10 minutes we'll go through. There will be a recording available afterwards, but for those that have joined live, uh, the benefit is that we have the chat open for any questions. So feel free to throw those in throughout and uh, we will have time for that at the end or Benji will answer them in the chat. Um, so with that, I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to dive right into airflow. So again, true to form with these series, we're going to keep these very DAG author focused. Uh, we're going to jump right into the DAGs and the code. And again, today I want to talk about the Python task decorator. So decorators are a relatively new concept to airflow. They were actually released with airflow two, um, which has been out for quite a while now, um, but they were originally part of the uh, task flow API and provide an alternative way of authoring your DAGs. Um, so they're kind of a different style than traditional operators and they have a little bit of different functionality. So they're super useful in some uh, cases. And so I wanna highlight that today. Um, the way I'm gonna do that is we're actually gonna first look at a DAG that uh, uses traditional operators. Um, we say that to mean anything that's not a decorator. So the operators you're used to, um, like the Python operator or the Postgres operator, things like that. Um, we're going to focus on Python operator today because the number of decorators available in Airflow is somewhat limited. So they are typically used for Python tasks. Um, so anything that you would have done with a Python operator before. There are a couple of other decorators uh, available. I'm not going to go through those today, but just note that if this is a style that you're interested in using to author your DAGs, um, you can look at what's out there and there will be more over time. Um, so for our example DAG here, um, just to give you a sense of what's happening in this graph view, um, this is kind of a basic like ETL type DAG. We're going to grab some data from an API. Um, we're going to have a task that processes that data and then a task that stores the data. Um, if we look at the code for this DAG, um, actually for ease of viewing, I'm going to switch to, oh, sorry. We're going to look at it here because my VS code is uh, being finicky today. So um, again, this is the classic um, kind of DAG authoring style, what we would say traditional operators using the Python operator. So if I go through here, um, I define my API. I have three Python functions, one for each task. Um, it's grabbing that data, doing some processing on the data, whatever that looks like, and then storing it somewhere. Um, so writing DAGs in this way can be super flexible. You can sort of define whatever you want in your Python function. If there isn't another traditional operator that is specific to what you need to do, you might often use um, Python operators this way in your DAGs. They are the most frequently used operator out there, um, knowledge. So this is a pattern that a lot of people use. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I have my three Python functions here and then down here I'm calling them all in separate operators. Um, one thing to note uh, with this method is that this is the type of uh, DAG where the data is flowing through my task. So um, my process data task needs the result of my extract task um, and the store data task needs the result of the process task. That's why you see in these Python functions um, that I'm using XCOM to do this, and I'm explicitly pulling um, XCOM from the previous task, and then I'm pushing that XCOM as a new key and pulling it in the next one. So that's some extra code I have to write. 
I bring this up because if you're going to use the Python task decorator, you actually don't have to do this. So let's go to uh, the same DAG, but rewritten using decorators. So just to show you that it's the same, the graph here, um, same three tasks. If I look at the code for this one, you'll notice right away that uh, this code is actually quite a bit shorter. Um, so using decorators is going to simplify your code. Uh, you need less boilerplate. Um, and so it's going to make your DAGs uh, overall shorter and easier to read. That's one benefit there. I still have the API. And then uh, instead of having separate operators that I pass my function into, the task decorator, you see it here, um, and I've imported it at the top, I was just going to turn the function below it into an Airflow task. So all I, I still have the same tasks, so my extract, my process, and my store data, same Python functions, but I've decorated all of them to tell Airflow, hey, I want this to be a task in my DAG. And that's all you have to do. So you don't have to explicitly call a Python operator. Um, super easy to write DAGs in this way. Again, it looks really clean. It's easy to read. Um, another benefit is that it's going to take care of all of the passing data for you. So you'll notice in these functions, they're actually shorter because I don't have those explicit XCOM push and pulls. Um, the way that this works with the task flow API is that when I define my dependencies, um, Airflow is going to automatically infer with my decorated tasks that I want to pass that data. With decorated tasks like this, using the Taskful API, this is how I call my dependencies. So I'm actually, instead of using like a bit shift operator, um, like I would have with traditional operators, I'm just going to pass the function calls and note that this extract uh, data task is uh, I should say the process data task is dependent on the extract task. And so I tell Airflow that by just passing the functions in. Um, again, this is going to automatically say that any output, um, so anything that's returned from this task is going to be available in the one that's dependent on it. So I don't have to do any explicit XCOM push and pulls. Um, so super handy there. Uh, the other thing to note is that sometimes, you know, with the Python operator, you're not just passing in your Python function. You might also be passing passing in like your task ID or um, keyword arguments or you know other parameters like that. Maybe task specific parameters like retries. Um, you can still do that uh, with decorated tasks. In general, you're going to do that. Um, as a call uh, parameters to that decorated task itself. So um, with a decorated task, normally the task ID will be just whatever the function is named. Um, if you want to overwrite that, as I did with this one, um, so I called it just extract, um, you can pass in the task ID. I'm also passing in retries uh, to this one that are different from whatever the default is in my DAG. Um, you can note that there are multiple outputs. Um, so that means I'm going to create multiple XCOM values that will then be available downstream if I need it. Um, so that's true of this one where I have this dictionary that denotes multiple things that are um, being passed by this process data task. Um, so anything that you can do with a traditional Python operator task, you should be able to do with the decorator. Um, again, benefits here, it's a lot cleaner, um, easier to write if you're just dealing with Python functions. Um, the Python operator is still a fine option. There's no immediate need for you to rewrite your DAGs in this way. Um, it often comes down to sort of developer style and preference. Um, and again, what's going on in your DAGs? Uh, I'll also note here, this um, is about the Python task decorator, but I do actually use the DAG decorator here. So for kind of consistency and style, you can also um, instantiate your DAG in this way. Um, and again, pass in all uh, any needed you know, parameters to that. Um, I then actually uh, call the DAG down here by giving it a name. Um, and calling this function where all of my tasks are defined. If you miss that part, you will not see your DAG in the Airflow UI. That's a common mistake. So make sure you do that piece. Um, but otherwise, it's, uh, like I said, super straightforward. Um, I'll note that, again, this is a really brief 
sort of overview into the Python tasks decorator. There are other decorators available in Airflow. We are going to have a webinar coming up next week that will dive into all of those in more depth and also talk about um, topics like mixing decorators and traditional operators and other things that you would need for DAG authoring. Um, but for this session, uh, this is all we had to cover. So we will uh, open it up while we have a few minutes left for any questions. Yeah, so we do have uh, one question in the chat, which is, what about tasks that run in parallel, tasks that have different dependencies? Yeah, great question. So um, I don't think I have an example of this in here, but basically the way this works is when you decorate a task like this, somewhere you have to actually call that function, because that's what's going to tell Airflow hey, I have a task here, um, similar to how I call the DAG function down here um, and say, this is what my DAG is. So in this particular case, I have all three tasks dependent on each other. So this is creating that sequ uh, yeah, sequential flow um, of three tasks here. If I wanted, say, three independent tasks, so I wanted them to run in parallel, you would simply call each of these uh, individually. So you would have um, like a store data parentheses and then on the next line process data parentheses. Great. Next question. Um, is it only relevant when all of our operators are Python? No. So, well, yes and no. Um, so there are only certain decorators available and Python is probably the most commonly used one. Um, so you can't decorate any type of function um, within Airflow. For example, there's no decorator for the Postgres operator. So if you're trying to run a Postgres query, you would still use the traditional operator, um, but you can mix them in the same DAG. So you could decorate only your Python functions and then have um, traditional operators for everything else. And that's something that we will cover more in depth during our webinar next Tuesday. I'll actually show some examples of that. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, definitely sign up for that webinar. Yeah, and just to add to that, to answer one more question that came in along the same vein, um, you can mix and match these uh, within the DAG and, and interleave the operator. So you don't have to, you can do operator and then task flow and then back to an operator. The only thing that you miss is you can't um, pull the uh, XCOM automatically unless they're all uh, task flow. Right, that's exactly right. So uh, we have a few more questions. Any more recommendations in particular regarding to unit testing DAGs implemented according to the DAG task decorator? Um, that's a great question. I would say the only thing that's different there, and I guess it's not even really different as opposed to testing any other DAG is, um, you know, if you have just Python functions that you're running within your DAG, you probably want unit tests for those functions if you're using them in production. That would apply if you were calling them with a Python operator as well. Um, so I wouldn't really say there's anything different about testing when using decorators. Again, it mostly comes down to the style that your DAG is authored in, but in the end, your DAG is doing the same thing uh, as it would be with uh, using the non-decorated Python operator. OK, and it looks like this is our last one. Can you still access context variables in task flow like you showed with the TI in the classic example? Um, yeah, you can absolutely still pull a variable in. Um, you Within this function, um, you can access you know, anything that you would in a function you were using with the Python operator. So um, the reason you don't see that in the stack is because those um, that was pulling XCOM from the task instance, and I don't need to do that here, you still have full access to um, that task instance and the data that comes from it. So you would pull it just in the same way that um, you would in any other Python function. Okay, it looks like that's, oh, we actually have one more that came in real quick. Let's make this the last one though. Um, could you confirm that the bitwise operator can or cannot be used for task dependencies? Yes, it can still be used for task dependencies. Yep. Great question. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. 
Well, thank you for joining everybody. As I said, we will have um, a recording of this available afterwards if you want to refer to it. Um, definitely, if this is a topic you're interested in, you want um, some more in-depth examples, uh, join us for the webinar next Tuesday. Um, you can register for that on our website. And uh, we hope that everybody has a great rest of their day.